This is chapter number 18, Pollution of Air and Water. We are taking question and answer on pollution of air and water. What is the difference uh, way in which water gets contaminated? So there are certain ways in which water gets contaminated. The major one is the dispose from various industrial units because these are very harmful chemicals that come out of the industrial units and they directly go into the rivers and these chemicals are very poisonous and they contaminate the water. Then the sewage from the cities, the sewage water gets con contaminated when the sewage is disposed of without any pro proper treatment into the rivers. Then when we have say crop here we apply insecticides and pesticides and then it due to rain it goes inside the groundwater and then we drink this water this is how water gets contaminated at an individual level how can you help reduce air pollution there are various ways in which as an individual we can help reduce air pollution because if we as a single person starts working on it then only the air pollution can be reduced first is we have to plant trees second is we need to use the pub public transportation and also carpooling we need to increase that means if uh, three or four people are going to the same office from the same place or on the same same uh, route then they must pull a car so that they must not use various car because the emission from the car or the vehicles they are very dangerous they cause air pollution and uh, if uh, you are going to short distances why not to try going by foot or bicycles because cars and scooters as i said they are the key key to air pollution uh, production and uh, when we are uh, having some celebration like uh, some marriage or diwali etc then I'm, I'm not saying that we, know sh we should not use cra crackers because this is a way to express our feelings, enjoy. We need to use some eco-friendly cra crackers or minimize the use of crackers as much as possible because this creates air pollution as well as noise pollution. And then the dry leaves and garbage has to be dealt very carefully. We should not burn them because if you burn them, then it will produce greenhouse gases, which is very, very important and this why this is important because they are the key to global warming and we need to reduce them as much as possible clear transparent water is always fit for drinking comment no because clearness everything that shines is not a diamond so transparent water is not always fit for drinking it may contain because the uh, microorganisms cannot be seen with naked eyes so it may contain harmful microorganisms, soluble salts, other pollutants. And sometimes water looks very pure, clean, but it may have certain dissolved salts or bacteria that are indeed not good for us. We should purify water before drinking. And this water can be purified with the help of water purifier or you can also boil it. You are a member of municipal body of your town. You are given a post. Now you need to enlist some measure that will that would help your town to ensure the supply of clean water to all its residents what you have to do first thing you need to make proper arrangement to treat the water properly so that when it reaches the resident it has to be free from harmful germs chemicals and physical impurities then the laws have to be enforced properly to treat water and chemicals before they are even sent to any water bodies then the pipes you are using to supply water you can't just uh, lay the pipe and forget because proper maintenance is required it may have some corrosion breakage or leakage this has to be seen and you can also organize various awareness programs so that the people who are not aware of this thing they are just um, drinking any water or or bad water polluted water and they are having diseases and all kind of problems so if they are aware because you are the key person who can make them aware 
that how to keep uh, the water resources clean and also how to conserve the water. Explain the difference between pure water and polluted water. Pure water has some ingredients or say elements which are in proper order, proper percentages. So, pure air is, mi is a mixture of gases in proper amount which is good for living being. 78% uh, of this mixture is nitrogen, 21% oxygen, carbon dioxide, argon, methane, ozone and water vapor are also present in small quantities and this is known as pure air. Now, when it is com contaminated with any other unwanted substance that may be harmful for us, for living as well as non-living being, this is referred to as polluted water. Explain circumstances leading to acid rain. How does acid rain affect us? See, this is our ground. These are the clouds. What happens here is, they, there are chimneys, these industries. These are, we are burning the leaves and garbages and other pollutants. So, they all are producing harmful gases and they are going above because gases, they rise. Now, they are here. All the gases are here and they make a blanket. But when it rains, this water vapors combine with them and they come directly to us, come back to us. So, this is how acid rain works. So, when harmful gases like the SO2, sulfur, sulfur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide react with water vapor present in the atmosphere to form sulfuric acid and nitric acid. So, this acid drop down with rain making the rain acidic. This is known as acidic rain. So, what can happen with acidic rain? Acid rain can cause skin irritation. It can inhibit germination of plants. It can cause corrosion to bridges and buildings. And it can also affect the fertility of soil. It may even destroy the soil and the most important aquatic life. Which of the following is not a greenhouse gas? Nitrogen is not a greenhouse gas. Carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide and methane, they all are. Describe the greenhouse effect in your own words. See, greenhouse uh, is a, a concept in the upper latitude where there, uh, there are the, the weather is al always cold. So, what happens in order to grow vegetable, they create a greenhouse and it remains uh, this box or this, this house remains hot or warmer so that the plants and other flowers can grow. And now this is happening, this, this scenario is happening or present in our globe, on our globe, on earth. So, greenhouse effect is a process by which the solar radiation is absorbed by greenhouse effect and the temperature of earth atmosphere is increased. And this increase in the temperature of the surrounding is responsible for global warming. I also say it as global warming because the gases which are CO2, methane, nitrous oxide, water vapor, they all trap heat radiation. See, sun gives us heat and these gases here, they trap this heat. They don't allow this grip to, uh, heat to go out. And when this is heated, the glaciers, the, the ice, this will melt. And then this will melt, the water in, well, level will increase. So, all the islands which are very close to the sea or glaciers, they will all, um, they all will be, they, will, they all will go inside water means they will be submerged inside in the water. So, gases, all these are very harmful, they're, they're, therefore these are uh, greenhouse gases. And they are often used for, as I said here, they're growing flowers, vegetables and plants mainly in the cold region, upper latitudes and lower latitudes. Now, because of the increase in concentration of greenhouse gases in our environment, this is adversely affecting the climate because the temperature is increasing and we are also watching and witnessing the change in the climate. Prepare a brief speech on global warming that you have to make in your class. So, you have to be very specific about what is global warming, what are the effects, how we can work to reduce the global warming. So, continuous in increase in the temperature of earth due to increased level of greenhouses effect is global warming. These greenhouses effect, the greenhouse gases have the tendency to absorb the heat and not letting it go away from the atmosphere that is creating an increase in temperature that is uh, you can say acting as a blanket to cover our earth. So, now global warming is 
the biggest concern worldwide the scientists believe climate shifting melting of glaciers sudden floods in coastal region they are due to global warming the kyoto protocol the paris accord in 2017 is is all these agreements where the countries are meeting in order to curb in order to reduce the emission of greenhouse gases and see you must say this also that small contribution in at an individual level can make a huge difference in the state of the environment you need to plant tree nurture the tree and try to uh, minimize the production of greenhouse gases as far as possible describe the threat to the beauty of taj mahal taj mahal is built by shah jahan because uh, um, he wanted to show love so people say that taj mahal Shah Jahan created Taj Mahal, and he spread love to the world. So all over the world, the people, the tourists, they come to India to to witness the realistic presence of love. Now this is so important that this is called as one of the wonders, seven wonders, one of the seven wonders of world. It is so important that seventy thousand tourist people. they visit every day to taj mahal now the threat if there is a threat to taj mahal we'll be losing lot of money we will be losing lot of foreign exchange we will be losing the most important thing which we have in our country so due to the increase in gas like so2 sulfur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide the acid rain take place the acid rain corrodes the marble of the monument the marble is very very is crystal clean white now the phenomena phenomena is known as the marble cancers so suspended particle matter like such as soot particles emitted by the mathura oil refinery just just after agra we have mathura mathura has a refinery we have nothing against mathura oil refinery but the production the the gases it produces it comes with air to affect the taj mahal that is why the clean white marble is has already become yellow why does the increased level of nutrients in the water affect the survival of aquatic organisms see aquatic organisms we don't consider them as a part of our life but they are the, indeed the the most important in the in the food chain also in the uh, biodiversity also so excessive quantities of chemicals which we are using fertilizers weedicides pesticides they are washed from the field and they enter into the water life that is ponds lakes rivers So these act as a nutrient for algae to flourish, and once these algae die, they serve as food for decomposers like the bacteria. So in this process, a lot of oxygen is being used up. Lot of oxygen in these ponds gets used up. So the decrease in oxygen level will kill aquatic organisms. So this is all about uh, this uh, question and answers on very important aspect of our life that we need to understand. because this is not about only giving exam this is how to live and let our next generation live in a good environment clean environment and this is all about the pollution thank you so much